Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. <laughs> Glory. Glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. Praise God. Well, you may be seated if you can. Hallelujah. Some people think, you know, it's ridiculous. People come to church and shout and jump and holler. <laughs> Amen. Well, we've got something to shout about. Amen. we got something to leap and jump about. <laughs> Hallelujah. A number of years ago, way back in the 30s, my hometown of McKinney, Texas, there's a man by the name of Largent. Mr. Largent lived there, but he was also a scout for the Chicago White Sox baseball team. He prevailed on the... Now, in those days, they traveled by train instead of by plane. And a lot of times on the way back home before the season would open, you know, they'd stop by and play different places, different teams. So he prevailed on them to come to stop by McKinney and play the McKinney High School team, Chicago White Sox. And McKinney High School team had a pitcher by the name of Otho Nicholas. And, and he beat the Chicago White Sox one to nothing. They wanted to sign him up right then. In fact, did eventually, but he hurt his arm, and so he never did go very far. But you got down there, you see, to the bottom of that ninth inning, it's still zero and zero. Amen. And so a guy walked. Somebody, you know, uh, sacrificed him on to second base, so he's on second base. And the young man who played second base came up to bat. And he hit a double and scored that fellow and won the game. But now his name was Mosley. And Mr. Mosley was county superintendent of all the schools in the county. Had his main office in the courthouse building. And when his boy knocked that double and won that game, I was setting up in the bleachers, as high as you could get, and he was right down in front of me. He jumped up and began to jump up and down, hollering, that's my boy, that's my boy. Amen. Pulled his coat off, threw his coat on the floor, jumped up and down on his coat and said, that's my boy. Yeah. I got to thinking about it. Praise God, that's my Jesus. Yeah. Whoa, glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He did more than hit a double. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He did more than hit a home run. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. He saved me. <laughs> Amen. He lifted me up. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. That's what I'm happy about. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank God. Get happy about what God's doing. Get happy about what God has done. What he is doing, what he's going to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God forevermore. Amen. <laughs> 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 
How many of you were not here this morning? You missed it. I'll tell you, we had a time. Amen. It's good, but it's going to get better. Amen. Thank God for the Word. That's when the Word of God works for you. You get happy about it. Joyous. Amen. Thank God. Well, we talked this morning on prayer. We're going to spend one more morning at least on that subject. Then we're going to talk about faith. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Too many times, someone, you know, begins to speak on the subject of faith. Somebody said, oh, I've heard that before. You know, the Bible didn't say faith come from having heard. It says it comes from hearing and hearing. Keep on hearing. Amen? Amen. Thank God. So, that's the morning service. What are you going to do in the night service? I don't know. I don't, that's the faintest idea. <laughs> We're just going to obey the Lord, do what He says do. Thank you, Father, again tonight for the privilege that we have to come together in the name of Jesus. Together around that name that's above every name, the name of our Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, again tonight for your precious, holy, written Word. And as we approach your Word, we approach it reverently and humbly. We pray that it shall be thus and so for each individual under the sound of our voice. We thank you, Father, for the blessed Holy Spirit, whom you've sent to be our helper, whom you've sent to indwell us, to be our teacher, to be our guide. We trust him tonight to direct us, guide us, give us utterance, that we may speak as of the oracles of God. Hallelujah. Thank you for the blessed Holy Spirit. May he unfold, unveil, reveal the word of God to our spirits this night. And we'll give all praise and all honor and all glory unto you and to your worthy name. For it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Glory to his holy name forever. If you have your Bibles tonight, I'm going to ask you to open them to two openings. First of all, from the book of Isaiah and the uh, 10th chapter and the, what verse is it, 26, 27 verse, whatever, somewhere along in there, yeah, 27, I believe. I just want to notice the latter part of the verse. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The yoke shall be destroyed. Then open your Bible to the fourth chapter of Luke. You are familiar with it. In this fourth chapter of Luke, after, in the third chapter, Jesus was baptized by John in the Jordan River. The Holy Spirit descended upon him in the bodily shape and form as a dove. And a voice from heaven spoke and said, This is my beloved Son, whom I well please. Hear ye him. The Word of God tells us then in this fourth chapter of Acts that he, Jesus, the 14th verse of the fourth chapter, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. Hallelujah. And there went out a fame of him through all the region around about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, stood up far to read. There was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, or Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he's anointed me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he's anointed me. Hallelujah. Amen. He's anointed me to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. To the poor. 
He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, amen, and recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. In other words, I'm anointed. Amen. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said unto them, Ye will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we've heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. But I tell you of a truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha, the prophet. And none of them was cleansed, same, saving Naaman, the Syrian. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. You know, when folks hear the word, everybody's not filled with happiness and joy like you. They were filled. They were religious people. But, you know, just because you're religious doesn't mean you're saved. Amen? Just because you're religious doesn't mean you're filled with the Spirit. They were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him into, uh, and, and, and led him to the brow of the hill whereon the city was built. I don't know whether you've ever been there or not, but I've been there. I know exactly where it was. And they cast him down headlong. He passing through the midst of them went his way. They would have killed him. Well, I want to talk about the anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Notice, back up to this 15th verse. First thing he did after he was anointed, the Holy Ghost is upon me because he's anointed me. First thing he did, this 15th verse says, and he taught, taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. Thank God we can teach with the anointing. Amen. Praise God. I didn't always know that. You know, you know, and our problem is we don't know too much yet. We know so little, but thank God for what we do know. I mean, for the first uh, nine years, well, let's see, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah, first nine years, of my ministry, I was strictly a preacher. Amen. It entirely different most of the time what I speak today. I mean, I started preaching as a young Baptist boy even before I got baptized with the Holy Ghost. I was pastor of a country church. And uh, they, 85% uh, of us were Southern Baptist. But we just called it a community church. And invited everybody to come, you see, and put no name on it. So we had some Episcopalians and some Methodist, fine Methodist folks, and some Presbyterians. Hallelujah. And eventually there was a couple of Pentecostals started coming. But I preached, and they would say to me, slow down. I went so fast. Slow down. We, we don't get half of what you say. But, you know, I was just inspired to speak, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. And then not only that, but uh, I, uh, my, my wife said to me after we married, she said, you know, I was entirely different in those days. You wouldn't recognize me. <laughs> she said, honey, why do you use all those big words? I went in for big words when you were preaching and then take 10 to 15 minutes to explain what the word means. <laughs> But, you know, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, and between me, my wife and the Holy Ghost, they helped me immeasurably. <laughs> the Holy Ghost said to me one day, slow down. Amen. 
You see, some people said speed up because they're already so slow. <laughs> he needs to speed them up. But there are others like me that he needed to slow down. Slow down. And then not only that, but the Lord said to me, not only slow down, but he said, seek to state the truth in the simplest terms. Jesus said to me, when I was on the earth, I talked to where the, the common people, that he, he didn't even have any education. They, folks weren't educated in those days like they are now. And so he said, I talked in terms that they could understand. I talked about grapes and vineyards. I talked about sheep and shepherds. Amen. And, and in terms that they, so seek to see the simplest way you can say it. And I've sought that. I, I did what he said. I did what he said. Amen. But like I said, I was strictly a preacher. Then I thought you wasn't anointed unless you was waving your arms like a windmill and spitting cotton. <laughs> you know what I mean? You go so fast your mouth gets to foaming. <laughs> Amen. That's true. That's the truth. I liked to preach. I liked it. Thank God for that anointing. I wish it'd come on me more often. <laughs> Amen. But it just doesn't because that's just not his plan for now. Amen. And then not only that, but I stood behind, I never moved behind the pulpit. My wife said to me, I believe you could preach standing in a wash pan. <laughs> now, these youngsters don't know what a wash pan is. <laughs> See, there's Beth, you know. Some of the Raymer singers in band, I made this statement. They asked mom, said, mom, what a, what's a wash pan? Well, you may see some of those old Western movies you may see. You know, they didn't have running water. In the hotel, they didn't have one running water. They got a pitcher of water sitting here on the nightstand, and then they got a pan there about 12 inches in diameter. You pour water in that pan, wash your hands. She said, I believe you could preach standing in a wash pan. I could. I never moved behind the pulpit. <laughs> Amen. Never moved behind the pulpit. Amen. Praise God. But you see, the anointing will set you free. Yes. You know, I just stood there, you know, just as stiff as a poker almost, you know. <laughs> Praise God. Now I can do it both ways. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. I got out of the wash pad. I liked to preach, but I didn't like to teach. Now, it was a custom. I was pastor. Got baptized with the Holy Ghost, speaking other tongues. Got the left foot of fellowship from among the Baptists and came over among the Pentecostals. And my wife and I are pastor of a little Pentecostal church in the black land of north central Texas. And it was a custom, they said to me, that the pastor teach this auditorium class. In Sunday school, you know, auditorium class of the older adults, both men and women, the older ones. Say, how old? Well, older ones. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Well, I didn't like to teach. I tried to get out of No, that's their custom, you know. And, and Pentecostal folks are just as bound as others by their customs and rituals and rites and so on and so forth. No, that's it. I said, okay, all right. I wouldn't even look at the Sunday school. You know, we got a teacher's quarterly. It's got about three times as much material in it as a pupil's quarterly has got. I wouldn't even look at that quarterly all the week. Maybe about 45 minutes before, you know, I had the ability after I got saved, didn't have it beforehand, got baptized the Holy Ghost. I could read anything and then get up and almost recite it word for word. And so then I'd, I'd go out there and teach. When that was over, I'd say, whew, to myself, boy, I'm glad that's over. I wouldn't even think about that Sunday school class. I wouldn't even think about the lesson till next Sunday again. Amen. But you know, we had a little prayer group in our church. Actually, these ladies were meeting in their homes. 
just seven or eight of them. They didn't invite anybody else, but they were meeting to praying. And, and so one of the ladies said to my wife, Brother Hagin, better get a hold of that. They're getting off. And so my wife went to one of their prayer meetings. And she said, honey, I mean, you, you, you see, folks need a shepherd. I don't care how small the group is. Amen. A shepherd has the oversight of the sheep. And it's just mighty easy. You remember what Jesus said in the ninth chapter of Matthew? Remember the, you know, the 35th verse of that ninth chapter said he went around about their cities and villages teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. And when he saw the multitudes, he had compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered as sheep without a shepherd. Sheep without a shepherd will faint and will be scattered. Well, you see, you can, you can get into some great difficulty here. So I just simply said to them, see, thank God for the wisdom of the Holy Ghost. To these ladies, why don't you come to church and, oh, on Wednesday afternoon? That's when they met. Why don't you come to the church and pray? My wife and I will meet with you. Praise God. And we guided them in the right direction. And they became a powerhouse for God. But you see, if they'd gone on the way they were going, they could cause the church split and a number of different things. Amen. Thank God for the Holy Ghost and for wisdom. Yeah. Amen. I said, amen. amen. And so we met with those ladies every Wednesday afternoon. Didn't invite anybody else to come. Just, just, just them. My wife and I meet with them, and we'd take up prayer requests that people had turned into the church and pray over them. And I'll tell you, we developed so until if you didn't want it, you better not turn it into them because they'll get it for you. <laughs> you better be sure that's what you want. I could sit here and tell you some of the most miraculous and outstanding things that happened. But one afternoon, I was lying down resting, took me a nap, woke up and was thirsty, got up and went to the kitchen. In the month of June, 1943, went up and got me a drink. Decided, well, I didn't get my nap. I believe I'll go back and lie down. I was walked across the living room out of the kitchen, and right in the middle of the living room, I, I, I'm, I'm still walking this real slowly like, and it's just like somebody slipped up behind you, you know, and had a, had a cloak or, or a light, uh, you know, uh, not not an overcoat, but a light coat, you know, like a raincoat, something like that. And they'd slip up behind you and put that on you. you. You remember the Bible said when God spoke to Elijah for him to anoint Elisha to be prophet in his room or in his place, you know, he cast his mantle on him. Amen. And I felt that just like somebody slipped up behind me and put this cloak on me. And I stopped dead still right in the middle of the living room floor. And I knew what it was. I said, that, that's a teaching anointing. That's a teaching anointing. Well, now here's another fact of wisdom that, we, that would help us. You, 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 get, you think you got something from God? Prove it out first before you go to talking about it. You got some revelation or you got some ministry? Prove it out first. I never said a word to a soul. I kept carrying on the day services in my church, you know, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Saturday night, Wednesday night, just like I had been. But I said to these ladies, let's, uh, let, let's uh, you know, because we'd, we'd, we'd spend about two hours on Wednesday night. Let's take an hour with the Word and an hour to pray. They said, fine. There's seven or eight ladies. I didn't know you could stand there in one spot and be so anointed. Amen. And I began to teach just those seven or eight ladies every Wednesday afternoon. Began to exercise my gift. Well, nobody, you know, we didn't make any announcements. We were having a prayer meeting. Just these seven or eight ladies came on their own, had been coming. But they went home and told their husbands about what was happening. And some of them began to take off from work. And it wasn't long till. 
with no announcement that we had what long to we had more people on Wednesday afternoon than we did on Wednesday night. <laughs> Amen. Teaching gifts are working. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. And they'd tell somebody else about it. And we didn't invite anybody to come. But they just on their own, you know. They'd, they'd, they'd invite somebody else to come. And like I said, we had on Wednesday afternoon, you know, we had a bigger crowd than we'd have some of the other services. Hallelujah. Thank God for the anointing. The anointing to teach. Thank God for the anointing to preach. Thank God for the anointing to minister. Hallelujah. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord's upon me because he's anointed me. He went on to tell what he'd anointed him. We know, of course, as we follow his ministry, he was anointed to minister healing. Amen. You remember the woman with the issue of blood? Remember the fifth chapter of Mark? Now, both Matthew, Mark, and Luke give the account of the woman with the issue of blood. But Mark goes into more detail about it. The others just give you a little bit. But in Mark's gospel, the fifth chapter, he said there was a certain woman with the issue of blood of 12 years who had suffered many things of many physicians, spent all of her living, nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she is healed of that plague. Now notice, and Jesus immediately, knowing with himself, King James says that virtue, actually it's a Greek word, is power. We know what it was, it's the anointing. Jesus knew within himself that virtue, that power, that the anointing went out of him. Went out of him. Amen. The woman felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Jesus said, somebody touch me. The disciples said, Master, the multitude throngeth thee and sayest thou somebody touch me. And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. 35th verse now. He said, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. I thought it was that anointing. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. It was, but her faith, amen, received the anointing. Amen. Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Jesus demonstrated how the anointing works. Praise God. Amen. You see, because the word's anointed, you can teach the word. Because the word's anointing, you could preach that word and folks get healed. Amen. They get blessed without hands being laid up on them? Amen. I know a number of years ago, you know, you don't, you, don't, you don't tell these things at the moment, but after a number of years, because you don't want to embarrass anybody or create any problems. But you know, for instance, but you can tell it now. For instance, a lot of good things happen folks never know about. For instance, after John Wayne died, his nurse wrote me a letter, said, I'm writing at John Wayne's request that I write. And thank you for your books. It was such a blessing to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Praise his holy name forevermore. Amen. Way back in 1953, 1953, I was conducting a meeting in Waco, Texas. And I saw this individual, very outstanding individual. I mean, they dressed so. They stood out from the crowd. I asked the pastor. I didn't know whether it was one of his members or who. No, he didn't even know who it was himself. I said, well, I wonder about. And then he said to me, the pastor said to me, you know that individual puts a $50 bill in every offering. Ushers watched, you see, every, every offering, $50. And so then finally, after several days, we ran the meeting for four weeks. 
But after several days, the pastor said to me, I found out who that person is. Their office manager for one of the leading evangelists, to be exact about it, Billy Graham, his office manager, and said, the pastor said to me, I found out they have terminal cancer, and they've come to these meetings to receive healing. There's a little sequel to that story. I'll get back to it. You, 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 you want to hear this? A lot of good things happen, folk. You know, we don't talk about it. But, uh, but you know, they, 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 they're, they're Wheaton, you know, uh, Billy Graham Library, so on. And, and so he wrote me and said, Brother Hagin, send me several of your best tapes, you know, for the library. I had my secretary write back and said, my best tapes are on the subject of healing. He wrote back and said, we know that. That's what we want. <laughs> we sent him those healing tapes for their library. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. A lot of good things happen. A lot of folks never know happen. And you know, you don't get up and talk about it and brag about it. But, but, you know, years have passed by. And so it's all right. So then I met this individual person. The pastor introduced me. And they told me their story. Uh, we, I always believed in healing, but didn't understand, you know. I just believed God, you know. So I said, well, now you just keep coming. See, I know faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, particularly the day services. Oh, they said, we're coming to every service. We're going to be here as long as you're here. And I was there four weeks, and they were there four weeks. Well, they listened for two weeks. At least an hour every morning. Monday, we took Saturday off, Monday through Friday. Second week, Monday through Friday. We're over in the third week now. Amen. And I'm te I, I'd stand in the daytime off of the platform, and you know, because we only had a oh, couple of hundred people out, maybe or, or maybe three hundred, but uh, for the day, sir. So I'd stand down here, had me a podium here, you know, and teach it. And this person was sitting here, just about the second row back, you see. And, and, and I suddenly looked at him, and I was like, remember the 14th chapter of Acts about Paul? And, and, and the Word of God tells us that he preached the gospel, or they, Paul and Silas, Paul and whatever. And so they preached the gospel. But there sat by at Lystra a man that was crippled, never had walked. The same heard Paul speak who, Paul, steadfastly beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said, stand upright on your feet. And the man leaped and walked, praised God, and was healed. Well, I perceived. You say, how, how do you do that? Well, their face suddenly, their eyes, that's the reason I get down here close. Their eyes suddenly lit up. It looked like their face lit up. The entrance of his words giveth light. And so right in the middle of my Bible lesson, I, I happened to look at this person, and, and their face was just all aglow. And I said, stand up and receive it. That's yours. You know what? They stood up, lifted their hands. That's the way we did it, you know, so they followed us. Lifted their hands, and not only got healed, started talking in tongues. <laughs> started talking in tongues. Started speaking with another tongue. Never had spoken tongue before. <coughs> Somebody said, I don't know. said, well, the same. They just won Holy Ghost, you know. Same Holy Ghost that will heal you or fill you if you yield to him. Amen. Same Holy Ghost that will fill you or heal you if you live, yield to him, if you'll believe. Amen. Praise God. Amen. amen. I said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I perceived. That's the reason I get down here close, you see. I see people's eyeballs. Praise God. <laughs> amen. You can tell where they're getting it. When they get it, if they don't, I just go over it again. Go over it again until they do get it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Amen. Anointed to teach. Now, you see, they got healed. I never did pray for them. I never did lay hands on them. Laying hands on folks is scriptural. Praying for them is scriptural. Anointing with all is biblical. But blessed be God, that person just was healed by hearing the word. Amen. That word's anointed. It is. That word is anointed, yeah. anointed to teach. Yeah. I was teaching, anointed to preach. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Praise God. I was conducting a meeting in another place and 
talking along the line of the Holy Ghost. And right in the middle of my sermon, there's four ladies sitting on the front pew, right in front of the pulpit. There was a one, there's three sections, one big section in the middle, you know, longer pews and two on either side. They, and, and right in the middle of my preaching, these four ladies stood up, started speaking in tongues. Well, I thought to myself, you know, they ought to know better. I thought they belonged to the church there to interrupt a preacher and him preaching, you know. But the pastor slipped up there and put his arm around and said, Brother Hagin, those four ladies are Presbyterians. They just got filled with the Holy Ghost. That's all right, isn't it? While Peter yet spake, the Holy Ghost fell on them. Amen. And they were convinced they had received the Holy Ghost, for we heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God, the anointing came while he was teaching. In this case, preaching. Preaching. Hallelujah. But then the anointing can be convinced. Some of the greatest healings. Most outstanding healings under my ministry, I never got to pray for them or lay hands on them. They heard the word and were healed. I came out here to California. I'd been to California just, just on a visit or traveling. Or Actually, I was going to Oregon to hold a meeting. I decided because I'd never been through this part of the country. Way back in 1954, 48 years ago. And so I decided, you know, to, I'd never been to California, so, so I'll come out across New Mexico and Arizona, over into California. And, and, and uh, I got here July. I didn't know it got cold in July. But, you know, it can get cold. Man, I lie. I got a motel over here in San Francisco. Just had on a short sleeve shirt and like to froze to death. <laughs> Man, I, my, my teeth are chattering. So I, <laughs> hey, hey, man. Yeah. yeah. Then went on up to Oregon, had to meet, and then it came back down, you know, uh, I'd, uh, Utah and Colorado came back that way. Never had been before over that part of the country. Amen. So I'd been here on that one trip. And then I was invited to come here to California and preach a camp meeting for the Foursquare folks down at Santa Cruz. Amen. They rented a Nazarene campground down there. And I came down, teach in the daytime, preach at night. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And they wanted me to minister to the sick by the laying on hands, and I did. A lot of things happen that I never know happens. Outstanding healings. And the congregation never knows happen. That's the reason we just need to be open and thank God and praise God. But... I was there for the camp meeting. Now, see, this is uh, what I was talking about before. This was a little later, same year, six, uh, 54, actually, at the end of August and beginning of September. And so, later on then, two or three years after 54, I'm conducting a meeting in San Leandro here in a full gospel Pentecostal church. And I said to the pastor, uh, my wife and I decided we're going, we're going to buy us a, tra a, a travel trailer, you know, 60, 23, six feet, 26 feet long. And, uh, you know, instead of staying in the motels and one thing or another, we, we'll have our own little trailer. Much more convenient. Because, see, we'd, we'd hold meetings three, four, five, six, seven, eight weeks in one church. Amen. And some some cases, they had all the facilities where you could hook up sometimes it's just right by the church building it's good just to go out of church and throw, pull your shoes off and sit down and relax amen so i said to him i'm going to buy a uh we're going to buy a travel trailer and so uh i said now I, i've checked them out i even went to the factory where they built several of them and I decided on one after going to the factory. Somebody liked that side. I didn't want them. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, I've got some good deals. I mean, somebody, you know, wanted me to sell one, you know, just, I said, I'm just going to start paying it out like rent, you know. I said, I've got some good deals. Actually, uh, several of them, finally the best deal was just pay $50 down, get in it and make a monthly payment. I said, no, I'm not going to put anything down. I'm just going to make a monthly payment. And so he said, well, there's a brother here in San Jose 
that has a businessman, Christian man, that has a trailer, you know, so on, and said, uh, hey, preacher's always buying them from him. You know, he he give you a good deal. So he called from San Leandro over, and in those days, you, you know, because uh, it, was a, it was a long distance call, maybe all area now. So he called, and the man answered, and finally he recognized who he was. This pastor's name was Webb. Oh, yeah, I remember you. And he said, there's a minister who wants to talk to you. He told him he's interested in a travel trailer. He said, who is it? He said, Brother Hagin. And he put me on the phone. He said, are you Brother Hagin from Texas? I said, yeah, yeah. You preached this camp meeting here, bro, two or three years ago, you know, four square folk. Yeah. He said, I was healed. Come on down. I got one for you. <laughs> and I did, and he did, and God did, and we did. But we got down there, sitting in the office talking to him, and he said, I'd had a major heart attack. In fact, a doctor said they recommended I sell my business and just lie around and rest and stay on medication, and you might live another two years, but could die at any moment. So he said, I liquidated my business, just lying around on medication, and we heard about that meeting. And so he said, my wife made a bed, you know, in the back seat of the car because he's so far gone now that he, he's got to lay down. So she brought me down there. We got there late. We just got in just inside the back door, got about the last two seats available, and you preached and then had a healing line. And my wife wanted to get me up and get in healing. I said, no. Said she looked disappointed. He said, I'm healed. I'm healed. He said, I said to her, didn't you hear what the man said? I taught a Sunday school class for 35 years in the Pentecostal church. The Bible's so. You hear what he said? I believe it. I'm healed. He said, I went right back to the cardiologist, and he checked my heart out and said, he said, somebody up there likes you. You got a brand new heart. He said to me, now then, now then, I've got 14 businesses here in California. 14, one end of California, another. He said, I'm going constantly, almost giving my testimony. He said, I don't mean to Pentecostal. I mean, being a businessman, have 14 businesses, you see, here in the state. He said, I speak to the Rotary Club. I speak to the Lions Club. I speak to, I give my testimony of healing. Hallelujah. Yeah. I, I don't have what you want. I told him, one of them, but said, I can get it for you. And he did, and I did, and we did, and they did. Praise God. Well, thank God for the anointing. That's what I'm talking about. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. It was the anointed word. Hallelujah. That he heard. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Thank God for the anointing. Say it out loud. Thank God for the anointing. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. It was the anointing that flowed from Jesus into that woman that destroyed that yoke, that bondage of sickness. Many times the yoke can be a yoke of sickness. Amen? Amen? Jesus was aware of an outflow. The woman was aware of the reception. Amen. The healing is a fact. Praise God forevermore. Amen. The anointing is a tangible substance. It's a heavenly materiality. The anointing is a tangible substance. Tangible means perceptible to the touch. Capable of being touched. The anointing can be less or it can be more. People, when it comes to healing, are healed by degree. Number one, the degree of healing anointing that's administered. I notice when I'm more anointed that you have more healings. 
But then right on the other hand, the degree of faith that gives action to that anointing. And if there's no faith to give action to the anointing, there'll be no healing. Those who, who, who are in healing ministry or have been in it or know anything much about it knows this, that oftentimes the anointing is ministered to a person to a degree that that person is supernaturally surcharged with the Holy Ghost. But yet no real or final healing takes place until something happens that releases their faith. Amen. Amen. 1939, my wife and I accepted the pastor of a little full gospel church in the black land of north central Texas. I mean, we've just, we, we're just straightening up. We've just moved into the parsonage. We're just straightening up in the parsonage, you know, and unpacking. And there's a knock on the front door. And I go to the front door. And there's a little boy there, about eight years old, cotton-headed. You say cotton-headed? Yeah, white-haired. When I was a youngster, I was white-haired. Then I became a blonde. When I got married, I was a blonde. I mean, golden blonde. It changed through the years and got darker. But I, as a boy, as a child, up to about 10, 11 years of age, my I was cotton-headed, white-headed. Amen. So this cotton-headed boy, I didn't know him. You see, I'm, I've, just, I've just preached my message on Sunday as a pastor of the church. I'm not that familiar with people. I don't know who he is. There he stands. said, Mama, won't you to come pray for her? She's sick. I said, who's Mama? <laughs> I don't know who he is. Don't know who Mama is. So he said, so Mrs. Swindle. Oh, I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, son, stand right there. You can show me the way to your house because I don't know where they live. So I put my tie on and put my coat on and followed that little boy, oh, about three, maybe four blocks to their home. And there she is in bed. Well, I talked a little bit about the word, you know, and then I had a little bottle of oil in my pocket, olive oil, and I anointed her with oil and laid hands on her and prayed. Finished praying and uh, started to leave. And she said, Brother Bigham, that was the farmer pastor, always prayed till the power fell. <laughs> well, I'm new. I've just come out of the Baptist. I'm new over in Pentecostal circles. So I guess that's the way to do it. So I got down and prayed for an hour. It took me an hour and a half. But I prayed the power down. I mean, the power fell. Do you know it does fall? Yes. Like rain. Amen. Yes. Bible talks about it. The power fell. She shook. The bed shook. I mean, the windows shook. And there ain't no storm on. I mean, it's, 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 you know, summertime. Just a few white clouds. No wind. I mean, leaves just, it's just calm. And yet the windows shook. Amen. The Bible said in the fourth chapter of Acts, you remember that in the fourth chapter of Acts? The place was shaken where they were assembled. Remember that? I mean, amen, yes. I mean, the windows rattled. I prayed the power down. She said she's healed. I went home. I went back to the parsonage. Resumed unpacking. That afternoon, there's a knock on the door, and I went to the door. There stood that little cotton-headed boy. <laughs> Said, Mama, I want you to come pray for her. I said, I thought she got healed this morning. Said she did, but she's hurting worse now. So I put my tie on, and I put my coat on, and I got my little bottle of oil, and I went back down there, and I gave her scripture, and then I noted her thaw, and I laid hands on her, and I started to leave. And she said, Brother Bigham, farmer pastor, always prayed till the power fell. I thought, man, I learned how to pray the power down, boys. I mean, it took me an hour and a half to begin with. I got to where I could pray it down in 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And she shook, and the bed shook, and the windows rattled. The house shook. Amen. I left. Next morning, about 10 o'clock, there's a knock on the door. I went to the door, and... Uh, there stood that little cotton-headed boy. 
said, Mama wants you to come and pray for her. I said, I thought she got healed twice yesterday. He said she did, but she's worse today. So I put my tie on. I put my coat on. I got my little bottle of oil. I went down there. I know never thought. I laid hands on her. And I know without asking her, because I can tell by looking at her. You haven't prayed the power down. So I prayed the power down. She shook. The bed shook. The windows rattled. I went home. That afternoon, about middle of the afternoon, there's a knock on the front door. I went to the door. There stood that little cotton-headed boy. Mama wants you to come pray for her. I said, I thought she already got healed three times. He said she did, but she's worse now. So I put my coat on, my tie, and, my, and went down and prayed the power down. She shook, the bed shook, the windows rattled. Amen. I said, Amen. Amen. Now, me and that little boy worked together for so long till we could read one another's mind. <laughs> that went on, that went on, and on, and on, and on, and on, and on. Days, weeks, and months went by. She ain't healed. But the power's there. The power shook her. I mean, she's surcharged with the power of God, like a person might be charged with electricity. And so I, we were in revival. I, I'm back in the bathroom, you know, shaving, getting ready, you know, so just, 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 just a few minutes till church supposed to start. I had something to do, and so I was late. I heard my wife let somebody in up front. Hey, man, I'm about half shaving. I looked up and saw this little boy coming. I said, I know. No, you see, I said, I know. Mama wants me to come and pray for her. I started to say because it's only about 10 minutes till the church starts. I mean, the parking lot's full. People are already over there, you know. How are you going to get down there and pray the power down? Amen. And I said, will, I was going to say, will it be all right to wait till after church? I said, will. He said, no. She said, come on before church. <laughs> he knew what I was going to say. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. So I finished real quick shaving. I was shaving then, you know, with one of the, you know, I got electric razor now and have for many years, but, you know, razor blade and all that. I finished, put my tie on, put my coat on. Now, I had a car, but it would take you longer to get there that way. I ran out the back door of the postage, ran in behind the church, ran down this alley, turned and ran down that alley and across that street and come right up to the side door. I knew she'd be right inside. And I opened, I knocked on the door. She said, come in. I rushed in. I had my bottle of oil open time I got in there. I wrote, known it with oil and said, oh God, heal this woman named Jesus. She said, if that's in your name, you'd do it. So you've done it. Amen. <laughs> Put the lid on the bottle, headed for the door. She starts saying, I said, don't say a word. Don't say a word. I know. I know. You're hurting worse now than you did when I came in. But the next time you see me, you'll tell me you're healed. Goodbye. And I ran out. And I ran up this alley and across this street and up this alley. And I come in the side door of the church and looked at me. What is exactly the time to start service? Just exactly. We had service. Glory to God. Amen. Made the announcements and so on. And... Uh, we, we, we are, you know, take up an offering and so on. And, and, and I, I said, uh, let's have a couple of three testimonies here. We had three sections of seats in the sanctuary. Somebody, you know, that got saved during this meeting or maybe healed. Something happened, you know, filled with the Holy Ghost. Let's just take one person, just one person from each section. So one stood up over here. I said, okay, go ahead, testify. They testify. Center section, go ahead, testify. Uh, and then the other section. Well, about that time, double doors back there burst open, and here came Sister Swindle. Well, she heard these people testify, and she thought it was time for testimony. She said, Brother Hagin, it's just like you said. You hadn't been gone 10 minutes till every symptom disappeared. And I said, well, I'll just get up and go to church. Praise God. So I said, here, I, you know, I never did have to go pray for her again. Never, <laughs> never, never. Thank God for the anointing. But thank God for faith. The anointing without faith will not prevail. Amen. We were in the First Assembly of God. We just used their facilities, put on our own meeting like we are here, in Pasadena, Texas, where Brother and Sister J.R. Goodwin were pastor. 
Well, they was a minister of our acquaintance, pastor. Now, at this time, he's not. But I'd preached a meeting for him in his church. We had heard that his wife had terminal cancer. He came to the meeting, and he said to my wife and I, yes, she, she's been operated on twice. M.D. Anderson Hospital there in Houston, out, you know, outstanding cancer clinic. And then he said it came back. I had her there in the hospital the third time. Doctor said, we can't, we, we can't do it. We've done all we can do. She'll be dead in three months. Well, he said, I, I just took off. I'm not preaching. I'm just taking care of her. She's bed fast, but I'm going to bring her. Got out of bed and bring her. I'm going to bring her. Well, when he did bring her, I'll tell you, my wife and I were almost shocked. I'll tell you, she had wasted away to nothing. She looked like a corpse. Now, the same night, there was another young lady. Now, this lady is probably 60 years old or 56 or 7, something like that. This pastor's wife, been in the ministry with her husband for all these years. But here's another young lady in the ministry, only 30-some-odd years of age. Same thing, same cancer clinic. Said, we've done all we can do. You'll be dead in so many, excuse me, days. So they brought her, made a bed in the back of the car. Both of them happened to be in the same healing line. One of them here, one of them on the other end of the line. My wife and I went along laying hands on them. This young lady, only 30-some-odd years of age, a singer, a minister, 36, 37 years of age, medical science said you'll be dead in 90 days. I laid hands on her, and I knew that anointing went into her. Jesus knew immediately when it went out of him, didn't he? But some way or another, I didn't, in my spirit, in my heart, on the inside of me. I, now then, when I got down to the other end of the line, laid hands on that older lady. I didn't say old, I said older. 57 is older than 37. Amen. She said, as she went down under the power, and both of them fell under the power. As she went down, she said, this is it. This is it. Months later. Because she was healed. Months later, she and her husband came to visit us, was with us in the crusade. We went out to eat after service. And she said, uh, my wife said, I noticed when you went down, fell under the power, you said, this is it. She said, yeah. But said, you know, for the moment, I couldn't tell any difference, though I knew that was it, and I kept saying it. My wife, my husband took me home. Now, she's virtually helpless, undressed me, put me to bed. He got up and cooked breakfast. Ordinarily, he'd been bringing the to her bedside to feed her. But he came to get me. And he had to carry me like a little child in his arm to the breakfast table and set me in the chair and said, we sat there and laughed. Healing's ours. We sat there and laughed. See, you got to add faith to it. And she said that went on for 10 days. And after 10 days, every symptom disappeared. And he said to me, I took her back to the MD. I just said, that's one time I think I took her in the will of God back to the hospital. They ran every test they could run. They couldn't find a trace of cancer. It had all disappeared. Months later, actually over two years later, we saw her still well, still healed. Praise God. But the same power. I'm talking about people are healed by degree. Number one, the degree of healing power that's ministered. Number two, the degree of faith that gives action to that power. And so I knew her faith didn't give any action to it, though that power went into her, and she fell, the, the younger woman. I asked the people that brought her, made a bed in the back of their car, you see, brought her. Did she say anything? Because I just didn't feel right. You don't understand what I mean? Did she say anything? Yeah, said she said, I didn't get anything I didn't expect to. The anointing alone will not heal you. I mean, she was surcharged with the power of God. The other woman was surcharged with the power of God. One of them had a degree of faith that's exercised. The other had no faith. So there's no healing. But thank God for the anointing. I said, thank God for the anointing. <laughs> the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Now then somebody that doesn't understand, doesn't know and hasn't heard the story 
Because both of these ladies are, are, are ministers in a Pentecostal movement. In other words, assemblies of God. Somebody said, now see, that proves that healing isn't for everybody. Now that older woman got healed because that's God's will, but that younger woman didn't because that wasn't God's will. I'll tell you those persons with that kind of thinking, if all their brains was dynamite and it all went off at once, it wouldn't be enough to blow their nose. <laughs> Amen. Word of God's the same for everybody. You've got to mix faith with it. I said the word of God's the same for everybody. You've got to mix faith with it. Hallelujah. 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 Anointed. The anointing breaks the yoke. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Now, you know, the Bible talks about the doctrine of laying on of hands. Amen. Well, we know the Bible said these signs are following them to believe they'll lay hands on the sick and shall recover. You can lay hands on people just in faith and believe God and receive. Or you can lay hands on people with an anointing and minister the anointing to folks. But you see, there's more to the, God, to the doctrine of laying on of hands than just healing. The Bible talks about laying on hands. They did lay hands on the acts to be filled with the Spirit. Praise God. You know, we were taught, we came over into Pentecost in 1937, we were taught to tarry. You know, you remember that? Amen. And so we did that. Actually, I did, it didn't take me long. It only took me eight minutes to be filled with the Spirit. Amen. I was filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized with the Holy Ghost. Eight minutes past 6 p.m., April the 8th. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God, 1937. Remember April 8, 1937 was on Thursday? At 8 minutes past 6 p.m. I know when I started talking in tongues, I looked at my watch. 8 minutes past 6 p.m. It was 6 p.m. when I arrived there. 8 minutes later, I'm talking in tongues. Amen. But now then, so I got to left 1937, left for the fellowship among the Baptists, came among the Pentecostals. Thirteen years later, the Lord said to me, lay hands on people be filled with the Spirit. I've been known to you to lay hands on people. Well, from 1950, into, not through, but into 1958, I laid hands on 10,000 people and heard them speak with tongues. Full gospel busy men were booming in those days. Wasn't anything for us to have 300 baptized the Holy Ghost in one service, you know, or several hundred. And the Lord said to me in 1958, quit counting them. So I quit. Amen. Scripture to lay hands on people be filled with the Spirit. Scripture to lay hands on people, on children. Amen. To dedicate them, praise God, and to bless them. And to bless them. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, you know, they brought children, little children to Jesus again and again. And, you know, disciples, I don't know, maybe they thought, you know, he didn't want to be bothered with them. Maybe he was tired because he's ministering. Jesus said, suffer little children to come unto me and forbid them not. Amen? And he laid his hands on them and blessed them. Hallelujah. He said to me, I want you to lay hands on people to bless them. If it's all right to lay hands on little children, physically little children, it's all right to lay hands on spiritually little children to bless them. Yeah, just to bless them. Is it good to be blessed? Yeah. Praise God. Surely it is. Surely it is. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. I've had people to tell me that I'd, I'd, I'd laid hands on them for healing. They'd been in my healing line. But I just laid hands on sometimes a whole row of them to bless them. And they got healed. Amen. amen. I said Amen. amen. I don't know, I, 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 Brother Phil here, he had a physical problem. I'd prayed for him, I don't know how many times. I guess everybody else had prayed sick had prayed for him. But in one of the meetings, I'd just lay hands on folks to bless them. And a whole row of them just went down. He's one of them. You can ask, he's been healed ever since then. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. The yoke shall be destroyed because of anointing. We wasn't even laying hands on people to be a, for healing. We was laying hands on folks just to bless them. Hallelujah. Is it good to be blessed? Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Lord said to me concerning the anointing, 
Now, he said, when that anointing is in full manifestation, you understand the anointing is not always in full manifestation. Now, the anointing to preach, you preachers and pastors know sometimes you are more anointed to preach than you are other times, aren't you? Aren't you? Folks, it's saying. God uses it. Sometimes they're more anointed to sing than they are at other times. People who pray are more anointed at times. Same way, folks who minister, laying on of hands, are more anointed at times. But now when that anointing is in full manifestation, I, I never have been in a service where that anointing was in full manifestation. I think maybe 60%, maybe 70 is the best. Most of the time, about 40 to 50%. But when that anointing's in full manifestation, he said, you won't even have to lay hands on them. He said, when that anointing's in full manifestation, you just get within three or four feet of them. And see, that anointing jumps out of me into them. And he said, they'll, they'll either fall or start laughing or dancing. Hallelujah. You feel that? You feel that? Phew. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. You feel that? The anointing is tangible. Who? Perceptible to the touch. Capable of being touched. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise his holy name forever. 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 Hallelujah. How about this row here? Y'all want to be blessed? Well, stand up and turn face this way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. What about this row here? Samaholakala. Samaholakala. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Samaholakala. <laughs> Samaholakala. Ha 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 ha. You feel that? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all want to be blessed? Stand up, turn face this way. Semaholakai. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. It's a mohoku. It's a hopakolo. It's a hokapolo raka. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, Samahokata, 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 Pi. Ha 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 Maybe you know about it. He's a who you get. Better from me if you get it. He said, "The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The yoke shall be destroyed <laughs> because of the anointing."
<laughs> you feel that? That's the anointing. Y'all want to be blessed? Stand up. Stand up. Turn around and face this way. Hallelujah. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. In Jesus' time. Jesus' name. Shoo. Shimahudake. Shimahudake. Palate. Shimahudake. Felipe. Felipe. Vivi. Samad. 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 Samad Tifuro. <laughs> Glory. 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 <laughs> Y'all want to be blessed? Stand up. <laughs> Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. I got it. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Glory! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> oh. 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 If you're not too drunk, can you wind this up?
<laughs> yeah. 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 Woo. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you feel that? <laughs> Glory. Glory, glory. <laughs> Y'all want to be blessed? Stand up. Face this way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Praise God. <laughs> Y'all want to be blessed? Yes. Stand up. Yes, more blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Glory. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Praise God forevermore. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Glory. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. Who is that? Who can tell me? Yemidi. Yemidi. Bala Frappa. Sama Holy. Sama Holy. Bala Fain. Amen. Well, the yoke shall be destroyed. <laughs> Y'all come help me. The yoke shall be destroyed by the anointing. Amen. Mmm. -hmm. 